What's going on, gang? So I just wrapped up building this little DIY power box, power station thing um, for the sole intentions of running my new Starlink, either in my truck when I'm out on my truck camping trips or in the family RV, uh, depending on how I'm in, going to end up wiring it in the RV. I'm not sure on that yet. But a little bit further down in this video, I'm gonna explain why I actually built this and why I'm not using one of my bigger portable power stations to simply run my Starlink. This was really fun to build. Everything that you can pick up either on Amazon, I actually got this rigid toolbox from Home Depot, but it's, it was a really fun little build. I got some fans on it. I've got some exterior plugins for the Starlink modem uh, and charging via solar or home grid. But it was just a really fun build, really simple build. But guys, stay tuned, stick around, and I'm gonna show you kind of how I built this, why I built it. And then I'm gonna open up my Starlink for the first time, get it set up outside, see if I can get it connected and do a couple of speed tests to see uh, if this thing's really gonna work for us or not. So stick around. So this is all of the components that I have purchased and accumulated to build this little DIY box. Now keep in mind, I might not end up using all of this because things, you know, plans could change mid build and I might not need all of it, but this is what I have to get going with me so far. So I got this, these are awesome, awesome toolboxes. I got it from Home Depot. It's their Pro Tough 2.0 series or something. I'm not sure. I got it for 29 bucks. I have two of these in the back of my truck, but they're absolutely great. They got a weather sealing up top and they are extremely heavy duty. And when you latch these things down, nothing gets inside. I've left these out in the rain on accident on a camping trip and nothing got in so I, again 29 bucks it was on sale i think they're normally 50 bucks so if you can catch those on sale they are really really nice but to go inside that box i've got a very very small phoenix 250 volt amp essentially 250 watt 12 volt inverter and i picked this because it is a low frequency inverter it uses very very little uh, power to actually invert energy. So that's why I'm using this. I do have a Bluetooth dongle connected to it so I can, you know, log into it through my phone to see how much that Starlink is going to be pulling. I got some battery straps that I might end up using to, to tie the battery down in here. I got multiple different, different gauges of wire. I don't have to use really thick wire because that Starlink only uses maybe 75 watts. I got some more various wiring with uh, battery terminal eyelets. I don't know if I'm going to use those. I got some three inch vents that I'm, I, I want to vent this thing. So I just picked these up. They're just little air vents. I got some positive and negative bus bar terminals. I got a voltage meter. I don't know if I'm going to end up using that. I got a switch, which might end up being used for these little 12 volt computer fans. Uh, just to keep some airflow going in that box if it's real hot outside. But again, this I, I don't know if I'm going to end up using these, but I, I kind of would like to. And then this is going to be my solar charge controller. It just can simply hook up directly to a one of my uh, foldable solar panels. I'm going to wire this in either into the bus bar or directly to the battery. Not quite sure yet. And then this is an extension that's going to be mounted outside so this is a waterproof 120 volt output that can mount on the outside that you obviously have to drill a hole. And then the end of this is going to plug directly into my inverter. So I can, I can plug in my Starlink router from the outside and then all of this stuff is gonna be running on the inside. Bigger ring terminals. And then what I picked to run this entire unit is going to be this mini Rodoto battery. And I, this fits absolutely perfect which is why I'm going with it right here on the side. So it's like this, uh, it's like this case was made for it. I can close it down. Everything fits great. And this is a hundred amp hour battery. So, I, you know, I haven't done all the math yet, but that should get me more than enough on a weekend trip running that uh, Starlink if I have to use this setup. Now, gang, if you like these style of batteries, uh, just a little friendly piece of advice, pick you some up now because I don't think they're going to be manufacturing these much longer and it's not because they don't work great, which they do. I think most of these companies are actually losing money on these batteries because it costs more to build and they have to sell them cheap, so they sell them. So I've got a few of these Redotos, and they're actually they're, they're great batteries. But pick them up if you want to, because they might be uh, disappearing here soon. But 
Gang, I'm gonna get all this set up and uh, get the build going. Okay guys, well, let me kind of walk you through what I've gotten done so far. Again, this is not perfect. I'm not a, a licensed electrician, so don't follow what I'm doing because this could blow up in my face. I don't know, but I, I think it's gonna work at least for my little Starlink. And you might be asking, why am I doing this and not just one of my 100 power stations? Uh, a, this is fun. I like tinkering and, and building things like this, but mainly B, this little 250 watt inverter is way more efficient than any other power station that I have over a thousand watt hours so typically the larger the power station in terms of watt hours the larger the inverter which is going to use more power this way i've got over a thousand watt hours in my redotto battery with a very very small inverter so it's not going to take as much battery juice to run that inverter so that's why i'm doing it um it's kind of backwards really in a sense a really small inverter with a really big battery that's, I don't have any power stations that do that and those wouldn't sell very well. But let me show you, let me bring you in and kind of show you what I've got down here. Okay, so in all of this mess, let me get my battery plugs put on. So you've seen the battery. I've got my two leads going into two bus bars. I've got my two fans. I've got an intake and an outtake. I was gonna put these on, just these little vents, but they're three inch holes and there's really not a good spot anywhere on this box to put those. So I'm thinking suck in air on one fan and push out air on the other one. It should kind of keep this, this inner box uh, with fresh air at least, kind of moving around a little bit. It might not be that great, but that's what we're gonna do. I've got my inverter hooked up. You got the wires kind of curled around or whatever. And those are also going into the bus bars. I've got my little, 120 volt 
coming out on the outside. That is plugged directly into my inverter. I've got this little Anderson power port, which is great. These were actually kind of hard to find, but I've got that tied in directly to my little solar charge controller that's also going to these bus bars. So this is perfect for like you know, just a little 100 watt solar panel and it's got Bluetooth. So I can monitor it to see, you know, what's getting fed back into this battery. And everything is fused. And plus this has a BMS in it that's not, that's gonna protect it from overcharge, but I'm really not worried about overcharging. Now, speaking of charging, I think what I'll probably end up doing is installing two more leads in that top port of that Anderson connection right there and probably just running it directly to the battery. And that way I can hook up a charger from the outside. But really, it's not any more difficult to open the lid up and hook my charger up to the two battery terminals. I, I think that's probably what I'll end up doing um, just to eliminate more wires in here. It's really not that big of a deal, but everything kind of closes up and seals up tight. And we can get the, the fan cut on here. So those are working. Not the quietest, but this is going to be outside and it's not obviously waterproof. I've got holes here, here, you know, you know, but if I do have to use this with my RV, I can stick it underneath the RV or, or whatever. I, you know, this again is not hundred percent watertight, but it's something that I thought would be fun to build. And, uh, yeah, there we go. So I'm going to get this thing, all this mess cleaned up. I'm going to take it outside, see what I can power with it. I'm going to hook up a solar panel to make sure that it is getting input with this little charge controller. And then uh, we'll hook up the Starlink. I haven't even unboxed my Starlink yet uh, to make sure that this runs it. So stay tuned. All right, well, we're getting a little bit of solar. So I got my little 100 watt shade stopper panel up here just on top of the truck. And I've got everything connected right. I did have to use one of those reverse SAE polarity devices because a lot of times these things, they're just reverse. I don't know how to explain it, but it's this little piece in the middle here. It's a reverse polarity uh, adapter. So now we're working, but we are getting, and I'll put a screenshot up, but I'm getting 70 watts being input into this battery. My current voltage is 13.3, and we're getting 18.7 volts off of that solar panel. So everything is charging up just fine. And I can even, once I get that inverter running, I can use the Bluetooth dongle that I got for that to see how many watts I'm actually pulling out of that inverter. So. Everything's working fine. Let's make sure the fans still work. Let's get this thing closed up. And you can see I got the solar panel hooked into the side of that uh, Anderson uh, power pole port thing right there. I'm going up to my solar panel. So yeah, everything's working pretty well. So now I'm gonna go get the Starlink and uh, Make sure that it'll that inverter will run it. All right, gang, man, this Starlink thing is awesome. I didn't think I was going to get connection because of this house next to me. It's kind of in the way of the northern sky, but I am connected. I am online right now, and I'm about to do a speed test, and then we're going to check to see how much power that uh, that modem uses. But I'm going to do a speed test for you folks right now because I'm just highly curious. I'll try to get it out of the sun. So speed test. So 147 megabits download, 17.9 upload. I think that's pretty good. I'll run it again because my camera died. Hundred and sixty-four megs download. 16.3 upload okay breaking the action here guys i just did one more speed test off camera and i got 316 megabits a second and all i did was kind of just move this a little bit my upload slowed down just a hair to 15.4 but 316 is way more than the first test that i got now let's see how much that's taking in terms of power app 66 watts so that modem is taking 66, 67, 58, let's say, let's say 60 watts to run that modem. So guys, this is, this is so much fun. So as long as I have a clear view of that sky, we're good. Let's see if we can't uh, 
roll some beautiful BWO footage off of this internet. Yes, sir, that is awesome. So the power box works, the Starlink's working now. So I think we're gonna call this video a wrap. Pretty pumped about this setup now, so cut that off. So gang, we'll see you on the next one. Take care.